Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the J-Free 906 podcast. The eclipse, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hope everyone is doing well tonight. Tom Burns here, and again, Jamie Kuba. Jamie, how are you doing? Doing great, guys. How are you? Doing fantastic. Doing fantastic. So, Tom, did you you uh, you had a partial up there with the uh, with the eclipse in your area, right? Yeah, we were. I live about 30, 40 miles from the totality zone, mm -hmm. so we get it. It's a dimming effect. Mm -hmm. now, if you had the glasses on, I suppose you could look up and see. You know, supposedly a ninety-five percent, but if you don't get that hundred percent coverage, you get sort of a dimming, dusky effect, and then it's gone. Yep. So yeah, and you, you were know, laying in a parking lot. I was. I uh, was working alone in my office, so I was like, you know what the heck with this, and <laughs> went outside and laid down in the parking lot and got to watch the whole thing. My daughter reminded me before I left, make sure you take your glasses. So mm, I had indeed. my nice little clips glasses. Mm, it was great. We only had like a 90% here, mm -hmm. but it was beautiful anyway. You know, we oh, didn't have much clouds, so I got some really cool pictures. and It was neat. Yeah, we went up to Buffalo and, uh, well, Buffalo was cloudy. So we, it was still cool when the totality happened. It did. It was, it just covered the area like a blanket and it was, and the temperature dropped like, yeah, I, <laughs> that's what coach said he didn't like the temperature change it did it dropped like i don't know six degrees or something really quick but yeah. when it yeah. happened it was just dark i mean all of a sudden boom it just got dark and the birds went crazy and all that it was really pretty cool though still in the end but but uh anyway we are here to talk about the curse of oak island season 11 episode number 22 abbey road tonight um i thought this was a really interesting episode um, you know, with a trip overseas and all of that, and some hope, still hope, holding out hope for the money pit that we get something out of the money pit uh, before the end of the season here. A couple more episodes. Well, we got like three left, I think, right? I think so, yeah. But what what did Marty say last night? There's a bunch of gold or a bunch of metal down there, and I want to know where it is. Oh, goes. yes. I wrote that down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in my notes, what he said for that. Yes, indeed. Yeah. We're going to. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that. So welcome to and uh, thank you for joining us here tonight, folks. And I would like to say, if you'd like to help support the show, you can do that. There's a lot of different ways. Uh, you can buy one of these hats that we have over here. And I got some new hats coming. Uh, I'm just gonna order up some new hats. They're gonna be all black with the uh, and they're the stretch to fit style with the uh, logo on the front on the left panel, kind of like Rock Equipment Company. If anybody has any of those black ones, um, so we got those coming. They they will be embroidered. Uh, so we'll get those on the website. Um, you can also help uh, in lots of different ways. All those are down in the in the description of the show below. Uh, we're also going to have a giveaway tonight. Uh, and the giveaway is going to be, oh, thank you, Linda, putting that up. Uh, yeah, you can do Venmo or any of that kind of stuff too. But I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, the payment for StreamYard's coming up. So it's like, uh, anyway. Um, let's see, but, uh, yeah, for tonight's giveaway, we have this little, uh, item. Let's see right here. If I can get the right thing clicked on, there we go. Uh, we've got a book from James McQuiston. Uh, he's got his curses and codes, secrets and societies and secret society curses, codes and secrets and societies. Uh, and also that's what's that? <laughs> say that three times. Fast. I know why well, I already blew it. So I can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Try and say it. <laughs> yeah, we also have that uh little I guess that's like an ornament. It's a, I've actually got one of these. I yeah actually see it right up there. It's hanging right up there, but right next to that book, the Jerusalem mm -hmm. Files. Um, but yeah, Jane McQuiston's book, and uh, we'll talk about how you can um be eligible uh for these uh later on. So oh, do we have Carmen? Carmen's in the house. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, look at what we well look at here. Look, well, look at here. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Yes, that's uh, Gretchen's uh, Templar magnet. Also, yeah, it's also a magnet. Got a little magnet on the back. So uh, we'll talk about that here in just a little bit as we get rolling. Uh, and for those of you who do uh, like the, uh, the Skinwalker Ranch, we are going to be talking about the secret of Skinwalker Ranch, which is starting their season premiere on the 23rd. It's probably going to be at 10 o'clock after uh oak island is on that evening and we're going to be we're going to start talking about it on the 24th um and so uh yeah we're also tomorrow night we're going to do a little highlights of season four for skinwalker ranch 
So same same time right here, JFree906 at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to hang out and check that out with us, we'll be talking about all of that. All right. But we are here for the Curse of Oak Island, uh, Abbey Roads. And I guess because they were talking about Abbeys, that's where they got that name from, right? Okay. I would guess, yes. I would guess. Um, so I thought that, like, again, I thought this was a pretty cool episode. Um, but it had, you know, many times... They they use these terms in here, um, and we'll get to those in a little bit. But some of these terms, like illuminated manuscripts, and they just kind of give that to you, but they don't really talk about it too much and explain just exactly what all that is. So, um, you know, I had to go look that up. And so uh, for those of you who had not looked it up, um, I got a little bit of information on some of that stuff, but. But a lot of times they do. They use these terms. They flash them by so quickly, but we don't get a full yeah. description of what that's all about. Yeah, you, what you, frustrates yeah. me is like they won't explain something like illuminated manuscripts, but then they'll tell you how the XRF works for the five thousand. <laughs> Come on, we are well, all experts on it now. Move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, uh, that's exactly right. Very true. Um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or tell you about FIPS or something. You know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we, know, is we know it's in the lab. Emma knows how to run it. Move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. And you know what yeah. that is? People do get discouraged with that kind of stuff and all the looking back and everything. But you have to look at it for the new viewers as well. Those yeah. folks that uh, who have, uh, they might be a brand new viewer and have never seen that before. So um, hang in there, Carmen. Just don't go away. Uh, yeah, don't go away. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say for the moment. Don't go away, please. Wow, that was a lot of noise. All right, so let's get started here. So Curse of Oak Island, season number 11, episode number 22, and one of my beautiful shots there. Here's a shot of the guys. We start off over in the money pit, Marty, Scott, Ian, and Steve, and they're getting ready to um, look at some new boreholes um, that they have. That they, I guess these are ones that Ian has tested the water in. Was that the way you took that, uh, Tom? Yeah, he and he and, and Dr. Michaels had been doing some testing around there, so that I guess just reconfirmed where they were going to drill. And and this is the part where Marty says, I, "There's some metal down there. Go get it. Mm -hmm. Show me, show me where it is." But yeah. what, we, what I picked up on was this battery sitting next to this, you know, the the PCB pipe with yep. the wires running down into the hole, and I went. Yep. What the heck is that for? Like, you know, <laughs> they got a car down there. They can't start. They're jumping the battery or what? <laughs> I I wondered the same thing because I saw that and I was wondering what, you know, what, what exactly is going on there uh, with this thing? And bear with me just a second because I'm going to move my little marker thing over here. And then it makes that weird noise. There we go. Yeah. Uh, battery right here. Um, what's that all about? We just, we're not really sure. Um no. But you know the thing that I noticed, and you see what uh, what uh, Scott is straddling there. Mm -hmm. That's one of the drill pipes that yep. they uh, took the casing out and put the uh, PVC pipe in there, um, so they can access it later. Um, that wire, there's two wires here. Did they both run down that hole? Can you tell? Yeah, the, as far as I can tell, they do. Hang on, just a minute, and I'll. No. There you go. <clears throat> Yep, there's the black wire. Yeah, it's yeah the now here's this wire. black wire running along here that's going in there. And also this thing, which I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure if that's a tube or a wire of some sort. And then they got these wedges in there holding them in place so they don't fall further down in. Makes you wonder what that's all about. Mm. My first thought was electrolysis. Um, they yep. use it to get rid of like rust and stuff on artifacts, but I can't imagine they were doing that down hole. <laughs> so they could I have don't some, know what they were. Some up kind to. of a sensor down there that needed some kind of power source, maybe. I'm guessing, yeah. Or here's a here's a good thing. Um, Sandy brings up a point that it might be true. Maybe creating a a, a magnet to attract metal. Yep. Um, uh, but I mean, they're looking for non ferrous stuff, they're hoping to find gold and silver, so yeah. Um, a small sump pump, yeah, it might be a little pump. That might be exactly what it is. Good, good shot. Everybody's coming in with some good, so yeah, maybe a pump. There you go, yeah. Um, so you know, and I noticed what was over here. 
uh, to the side, and I and I might actually have this in a different book. Let me go back one. Yeah. Um, I've got this in a right here on the side. Yep. Is this rig right here? Um, that's the either a the camera. I think it's the camera or the sonar. So they're putting a camera down. This remember how we always ask why didn't they put a camera down that hole, or why didn't they get the sonar down that hole? And you know what they do, they do. a lot. <laughs> Yeah. every single time they do and you we just, just don't, don't see, always it. Get to see it yeah yeah, exactly. yeah um they do what they call a gyroscope where they send it down because what they're trying to do is track any movement you know of the drill to make sure it didn't veer off this way or whatever but they're also trying to you know geo-reference where it's at on the world essentially yep. um but then they always throw a camera down too yep yeah. So, and we just don't always get to see it, like Jamie said there. So, you know, rest assured they are doing those little bits and pieces, but uh, they're just not showing us. Uh, the tube is is for water samples. That's what Ron said. Yep, you're probably right, Ron. Uh, that's I I agree. Now that now that you guys brought that up, makes total sense. Appreciate yeah. that. Um, here's another little interesting tidbit, and I love when they when Prometheus gives us a shot of these things uh, like this, and we've seen this uh, little print out map before of the money pit and the drill holes and like jamie just said um, you can see these these things right here this is the walking of the pipe those little yeah, those, those little wormy things that's yeah. that's what actually the the gyroscope is reporting right as it goes down every 10 feet they take another reading and they see exactly where that that casing has walked as it was drilling down mm -hmm. um so you get an idea of where they're at at the bottom because it is maybe 10 feet away from where it started at the top yeah. but you, um, you, you notice all those they get numbers one two three and four and none of those have a drill hole in them right there's one there's one and two here's three here's four and they're different shapes and they're different shape now yeah tom you made a good point about yeah. this earlier mm. if, if they were if they weren't the shape didn't matter it'd just be a circle right right you just put a box or a circle or just put a number there yeah so they've identified spaces there for a certain reason so why, why? and even the number four looks like he hand colored it hmm. if you blow it up if you look at it closely enough it looks like it's been hand shaded as opposed to computer imaged yeah and then these, these and then that rocks. pile of rocks there for whatever reason yeah <laughs> Why did they? Yeah. See, here's four. It looks like it's been, you know, it like in with a highlighter. Yeah, with a pink highlighter. But the others are all defined and outlined. Yeah. And then this little pile of rocks right here that they've actually drilled into once anyway. Looks like it sent um, the drill going crazy. Yeah. And when it got down there, the drill veered off or something. Yeah. I don't and we know yeah. it's right next to the garden shaft because we see the concrete pad marked off. Yeah. So. Here's the garden shaft right here on the side right here so that's the actual concrete pad um right there so interesting and, the and circles are the the rocks around the garden shaft. yeah yeah exactly yep. right here yep yep, yep. Uh, the memorial mm -hmm. so interesting stuff here i think those are the points of interest of where they're going to drill that's that that's what i thought um yeah there there you go zig said maybe defining the uh areas that have never been drilled I think you're right. Could be. And I think and it, and it shows you that there's still room for them something to be down there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think that uh and we'll we'll talk about this one a little bit later here as we go along, but I think oops. Uh I think this one is where they're drilling first. Obviously number 1, you know, makes sense, right? But you saw what they where they cut away in the bank. They were pretty uh, close to the garden shaft when they backed that machine in, yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, and this was this one, I thought this was interesting because they haven't they they haven't drilled these holes. Now here stick with me for a second on this. Ian said when they when they were going through this, Avante one, yeah, exactly. Zig, thanks. Um you see these right here. Um and, and maybe I'm maybe I'm off base here, but this one, this one, and this one. Uh, as far as I know, I mean, they can't drill those because those are on the hillside. Those are on the bank. This one's actually on the slope up the hill. This one is up the hill, the same thing. And this one's on the rocks. When did they drill those? Yeah, they'd have to. I mean, did they have to have the drill rig at the top of the hill almost? 
Yeah. Actually, the drill rig has a lot more mobility than you would think. It's basically on the back of like a really big pickup truck and yeah. they can swing it out pretty far from the truck. So okay. like they can handle like terrain shifts and stuff like that. Um, I'm thinking though, they might have to move some of those decorative rocks around. The, yeah. See, and that's what know, I was wondering because yeah, I, I just, it makes me wonder if, uh, you know, if these are like uh, ones that we haven't seen them drill yet, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what comes of that. But yeah, Avante won. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you know, and, and, uh, and I'm going to go jump over here to the next picture. If I can, there we go. Um, there's right in here, right back behind Ian on this slope back here is where they have to be. One of them has to be being drilled. And then they, they're marking one right here. Um, again, there's that unit sitting over here that they were looking yeah. probably down, down in a borehole looking at I'm something. I'm with Steve Guptill on this one. That is the one that I find most interesting, where the tunnel would be, in theory, coming out of the garden shaft and going into mm. something else. Right. Yep. Yeah, pretty interesting. Um, see, oh, here, here's, you see they have dug away. So there might, there very well could have been a, a borehole, uh, put in over here uh, in this flat area here because it is kind of dug away from the bank a little bit um and then they had uh this shot right here that this was actually toward later in the episode and i grabbed it out because you see they're actually digging in here back into the bank very severely um so they can get that drill rig like jamie was saying so they can get that thing backed in there a little bit further in uh to get this avante one drilled um and I, you know, it's kind of funny because I had mentioned, and not that I'm right or, or know anything about this, but I had kind of speculating once before uh, and talked about how I thought maybe that offset chamber that they were always looking for was up on the hillside or up on that bank um, back behind or to the west of the garden shaft. Mm -hmm. And now they're digging it. I think this is going to prove to be a very interesting borehole. <laughs> Um, I'd love to see him put a case on down in here next year at some point, but, um, yeah, I, I, I got, I got high hopes for this area. I'm thinking this might be where the offset chamber was or is we'll find out, I guess if I'm right or wrong, but anyway, it was interesting to see that they're actually cutting into that bank uh, yep. to get this one done. <laughs> Um, let's see. He said uh, new targets located in the area of the baby blob at depths to 80 to 120 feet. Um, which is pretty much tunnel depth, right? Yeah. What they suspected to be tunnel depth. depth. Didn't, didn't they think that the offset chamber was going to be in the 50 to 60 foot range? Yes. Hmm. Yep. That's my recollection. Yeah. If there is an offset chain, but I mean, let's face it: if you're going to drill down and go to eighty or hundred feet, you're going to go through the fifty foot range anyway. So, might as well have that. Might, right? might as well hit it on the way by and see what's there. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the offset chamber, you know, was kind of interesting idea because you, you know, being uh, if they had a tunnel that was down around eighty feet, ninety feet, or whatever, and then you um, you tunnel it over there, and then you go up. If you're going to have flood tunnels and all of that kind of stuff. And you have an offset chamber that then goes up into a 50 foot level that would keep it up out of that water right theoretically yeah. uh you know and to keep things dry in the event that it did flood which obviously we know that it has flooded down there mm -hmm. um yeah. that's kind of I the mean, idea behind that Go my ahead. theory is if if all of the rumors are to be are to be believed right because like we don't know exactly what the treasure is mm. but if the treasure does contain a number of different types of treasures where like there might be some written manuscripts, might be some actual gold and stuff. I think that you would store some of that stuff differently. So for me, that would explain this offset chamber because why otherwise wouldn't you just dig one big hole and put it all in one hole, you know, but mm -hmm. if you have different materials, you have to treat some things differently. So. Yeah. It was also speculated at one time that if they, if they, if there was manuscripts buried, that they would have been uh, encased in, in mercury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And there was traces of mercury, I think reported found like, you know, yep. hundreds of years ago or whatever, but yeah. Well, yeah so yeah, you're absolutely right. If you're going to store different things, you're going to require different methods of storage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Um, yeah, Gregory was just asking about the void. Um, and there was, there was a couple, yeah, CN 14.5 was one of them. Uh, let's see if I can, uh, let's see if I can get back to, yeah, let me bring this picture up here real quick. Uh, there was one, I think it was this, uh, CN, uh, C.5 N 14.5, this one right here by the garden shaft. They hit a void in that area at about, um, 55 feet. And I think the one you're talking about actually, uh, gear. Okay. The one that air came rushing out. I think that one is just below this number 16 right here at the bottom. There was one right in here and it was, uh, I think it was, uh, oof, I'm trying to remember the number on it. DN 16 or something like that. Um, and it was, it, you guys remember that it was the water. I mean, the air just blew out of that. They were afraid it was actually a toxic, yeah. might be a toxic gas coming out of there. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure um, there. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure in there, like they um, punched into an air pocket, which I think they did. I think they punched into an air pocket. Mostly. Yep. And uh, once they did, then, but I think it was this one right here. Um, yeah, I don't remember the number. I know we talked about that when it happened because that was pretty spectacular. Mm -hmm. That is another one where I would have got a camera down in there pretty quick. Um, and again, they probably did. They and did. Just, I guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and we just didn't see it. It's not newsworthy. I, you know, and I would think, man, I mean, look at, you see all the air that blew out of that thing. I mean, yeah. it had to have been an open pocket. There's no other reason for that to have happened like that. Yeah. Well, the air is gone now and it's full of something, most likely water. Oh, it's, uh, Zane said it's on the image he sent me. Okay. Let me look here. I got mm -hmm. that. I did. I did. Let me grab that real quick. Uh, let's see here. Oh, some... yep. There it is. Hold on. This is, uh, Zane's been working on these things and he's come up with some, some really cool stuff right here. Um, so this is his diagram and it's this one. Let me get my marker going here. It's this one right here. Uh, a, a point five dash 16. Yep. Yeah. I think so. I think that's what it is. 8.5-16 right there. Uh, that's. I think that's the one where it was just blowing that air up out of there. It was really crazy, but it was just in front of the garden shaft uh, where that was happening. So, And these are those new bore holes. These ones up here in white are the ones that they're going to be doing now, um, you know, trying to uh, find. And I, like I said, I think that's where the offset chamber is myself personally. So thanks for that picture, uh, Zane. Really appreciate that. He's He's been doing a lot of these things, uh, getting us some good uh, overlays and all that kind of stuff going on. And uh, Zane has got uh, – Zane and uh, Coach have got a podcast going too that's pretty cool. Uh, it's on Coach Steve Money. You can see him there in the chat. It's on his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, they've been doing some stuff there. Um, let's see. I have a core sample from hole E nine. Can you tell me where that might be on your map, Jeff, please? And thank you. Uh, let's see. E nine. Let me see if I can, you know what? I might have to go back and find one that's, uh, um, that I have, uh, where I can see more of the, the, uh, the lines on here. Let's see. Yeah, that one's not going to show me very well. E9. Well, well, let me bring this up. Might be able to see something. Uh, so here is your nine line right here. Here's your nine line right here. So E9 would have been right about. No, nope, that's I don't know if that's on that side or if it's down here. Actually, I think it's down on the on the lower side below. Um, I'd have to, let me, let me see if I can find that for you. It's going to be, uh, <laughs> let me see if I can find that for you later on. I've got a better one showing all the, uh, unless, unless, uh, Zane, unless you have one, you can send to me real quick. All right, let's move along here. So, um, after they got done in the money pit, um, and going through all of these things, which again, I, I have high hopes that we're going to salvage something out of this for season with a, with a, the, um, the garden shaft being, you know, all flooded out and some, they're going to set, they said they're going to do some horizontal drilling around what, 55, 50, 40, 50 feet, something like that. Yeah. The target range was 40 foot range. So 
Yeah, I see somebody actually made a comment a while back there about, you know, drilling down or drilling out 40 feet is not going to give you much room. Well, it's going to give you, you know, 80 foot radius. Yeah. Or diameter, rather. Diameter, right. right. So 80 foot. And why not drill down? Well, there's no point in drilling down because they're going to be in the garden shaft and they've already dug down to 99 feet or whatever. So going down, there's nothing there to drill into. You have, you have to go right. sideways or right. go down yeah. at an angle or whatever you want, but you're not going to go straight down. Yeah, exactly. Coaches. Yeah. Coach hit it. Yeah. That's exactly what Tom was just saying too, mm -hmm. is that if, and, and also that one, that pocket where all that air blew out of, I think mm -hmm. that was not that deep as well. So mm -hmm. you're going to, you're going to hit some of those at that level and you might, uh, might find a void that you, the void you were looking for. <laughs> this is the void you were looking for. Uh, it's a little Star Wars. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Not the void you're looking for. Um, <coughs> so next they jump over to Jamie's area, lot five. They should just name it lot five. They should just name it Jamie's Jamie's lot. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Or at least put a plaque with my name on it there. Jamie's Diggs, we'll call it. Jamie's Diggs. Ah, Jamie's yeah. Diggs. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Jamie's Diggs. Um, then you know, this was we're finally getting some better uh some pictures that give us a better look at what the heck this structure might be. Mm. Um yeah. It's been really confusing. I know with Jamie, with you being there and digging in it and walking around this thing every day, you probably in your head got a pretty good idea of the layout. And I yet, can close my eyes right now and draw. It for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. Yeah. And yet, we have a hard time because it still looks like. I see some lines of rocks yeah. and stuff. But the drone, the drone shot they showed last yeah. night, I, I when, when I took a snapshot of it and then looked at, it, I went, "Wow, this place is big." That like, was pretty is... good. Um, it wasn't fully excavated in that drone shot. Yeah, yet. I cannot wait for everybody to see the full excavation. Mm. But yeah, it's yeah. it's substantial yeah. for sure. All right. Yeah, I I bet it is, and there I do have one more shot of it. I think just before uh, the lot five is done here, uh, but this was an interesting. And boy, did this light up uh, social media! This thing right here uh, when it first came out, because initially all we had was the uh, uh, the CT scan of it, I think, or the XRF, one of the two. Uh, yeah, I should know by now because they've told us so many times what these things do. <laughs> 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 but we had the you one know, you have to, have to do a little section on the show to explain that to you yeah i know right, right. i wish they would then you i would know right? attention, honestly <laughs> i i just kind of pushed it out of my brain because i think we've seen it so many times um, yes there are two foundations there was the one that i was working on and then the one that helen was mostly working on so we actually called them feature one and two um to answer coach's question but then the show sort of dubbed them the round feature and the rectangular feature. Right. So that's why there's some confusion. Right. Yeah. That's site, really, site, site one was the circular feature, the one you were in charge of. Yeah. Right? Feature one was mine. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And the reason it got feature one is because they opened up an excavation unit in it the year before. So it was like, okay, this is where we're starting, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that the one where one was more impressive or anything like that. It's just, that was why. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, I did. Well, they both had their, they both had their good points, but I think feature two, yours, uh, I think your, your feature was the better one because of the fact that there was no, so much. One. Oh, you okay. Yours <laughs> feature one. Okay. I'm all right. Yeah, there we go. I, lost already. Yeah, no, both of them were really incredible and, um, they have, uh, it's just so much to tell, and I just wish that, like, I know, I know, we don't want to get you in trouble. Lot five. <laughs> 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 I wish that I could tell you everything, but yeah, yeah. well, we don't, we don't want to get you into just trouble. The fact that they're there, the fact that the, the size of them, the thing, the things that you've hauled out from Phil and then from actual, you know, activity, yeah, and the fact yeah. that the other stuff that they've found in the general area makes yeah. a I whole did the lot five math significant. on my structure. And I had determined that, you know, if we're talking about based on just the sheer size of it, that we're looking at at least three, um, you know, those Connex boxes, we're looking at mm -hmm. least three of them worth of fill and dirt that we took out of there. And, you know, well, and artifacts too. <laughs> and it was like, we did most of that by hand. I was just going to say that. You stuck it by hand. Anything, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Jamie, uh, Carmen, uh, Carmen Lake was asking about that structure. Uh, would this structure or structures house 30 to 60 men? Hi, Carmen. You should know the answer to your own question. You <laughs> stood right there and looked at it with me, and we talked about it. <laughs> Might be a leading I question. I think, lead I think Carmen's trying to lead the witness here. Uh, I, I think so, yeah. I can't officially say um, what the, the final verdict was, essentially. Uh, they haven't mentioned it on the show yet, so unfortunately I can't really delve into it the way I want to. Um, but it's... <sighs> It was something that kept us guessing all like season. Like, really, like every time we thought we knew exactly what was going on, there'd just be an interesting twist. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and what, and I go back to this real quick. Um, oh, there's a good question. Did they date from the same time period, site one, site two? Uh, roughly, we figure that Helen's feature, the, the smaller of the two, was um, older. Mm -hmm. um, not far older, but probably at least maybe a decade or two decades older, um, just based on the, the general types of artifacts that we were getting. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes, we did finish. We fully excavated feature one. No more to be found there. Not not in within the feature, but there's still plenty around the feature. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, they, yeah. what they only metal detected, I mean, they only went down, you know, a shovel's depth, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. How much of that stuff around there is Phil? Yeah, and I talked about it early on in the season um, that you could tell that the northern part of Lot 5 had been cleared at some point. Um, and if you're paying attention, you're looking around, you realize that the lots on either side had also been cleared, mm. probably around the same time period. So, yeah, if I had my way, I'd be right back there and I'd be doing GPR on the whole thing. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that, that, that like in the fact that I'm going after it. <laughs> what I had noticed was the fact that the, the size of the trees. Yeah. No, well, that's that, exactly that, that, how that, you know. Yeah. 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 You get past a certain point on lot five heading south, and all of a sudden you have huge old growth trees mm -hmm. and the terrain is really bumpy and um, you know, it's just, it's very, very obvious that part of it was terraformed. Mm. What kind of roof would a structure like that have? Um, well, again, it would depend on how we would define the structure and I'm not allowed to define the structure <laughs> right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, absolutely wood was something that they would have used to, you know, to build like structures in the the 16 and 1700s. So. Yeah, if you if you go back even as far as the Vikings, they were using wood and moss and dirt and everything mm -hmm. else to make their woods. And if you look at the uh, the dugouts that the indigenous people they they were all wood and then covered with moss or bark. Right. Yeah, yeah that's funny that you write that about academic work. Um, I made a joke with Marty that I was like, I don't need to get rich off this. I said, but someday I'm going to publish academically and that book's going to sell. And he's like, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, this this uh, little tidbit here that was found, like I said, it kind of lit up social media for a while there because um, nobody really knew exactly what it was. We saw the scan of it that looked like a little pearl with some, this, you know, pattern on it uh, but we didn't know what it was until we see uh it brought up in the screening process um and uh so there it is there and and i um and, oh am i wrong or is that button large it does look kind of big to me what 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 do you think on that uh yeah okay. when i first uh saw the picture of it that moya sent me my initial reaction was like um I think they call it a great coat you know it's like a like a heavy overcoat uh -huh. those buttons are usually pretty large i kind of thought it was about the right size for that mm -hmm. yeah i wasn't sure i mean we we speculated about this thing because of this view right here does not in my opinion does not look like a button <laughs> i mean it looked like we were no you know, it didn't yeah, we were looking at the one picture. This one doesn't really show it, but the one picture had like a greenish tinge up on this one side up here. So we thought maybe it was copper, uh, had a copper alloy in it that was that was turning green, and it was similar to that uh, folded piece of mm -hmm. copper 
that they had talked about last no, I, week. I could totally see why you would think that. And until mm -hmm. you flip it over and you see where it was attached to it, it's like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, like I the, honestly thought it was another lead bag seal when she sent me the picture. Oh, I think I responded nice. with, ooh, bag seal, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, yeah. I, you know, And you see these <laughs> places where it was like down here where it was like, broken off or something uh, that that didn't s scream out to me metal yeah. you know you know and then to find out that it was made up of of uh tin and lead mm -hmm. uh, i thought okay with the yeah, lead separated neat. from the tin i'd never seen anything like that before yeah now you you know in your research i mean uh as i mean i never honestly i had never even heard of buttons made out of tin and lead i mean is that I have come across um, some unusual buttons over the years, but nothing like that. Um, I've seen, I've seen one that had like, like a tin um, base to it, and then it had like a clay formed around it, sort of like the lead was formed around the tin. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, that was relatively modern, honestly. Like it wasn't, you know, sixteen, seventeen hundred, so. Right. Yeah, no, it, was, it was really interesting. I think even um, Laird and Helen were both like, well, it's definitely a button, but I don't know about it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, that's Malia's neatly manicured hand, not mine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate that very much. Let's get the ball rolling. Thank you very much, Craig. That's, that's really nice of you. Um, uh, but yeah, so yeah, I, I noticed that you, you know, when you're an archaeologist, um, uh, you're not going to be one that has the uh, longer lacquered, you know, yeah, not, not so much. Right? Yeah. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> the, the ring's the nicest part of my hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not going to be going to the nail salon very often to get the, all the, uh, yeah, get all that done. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So. Anyway, they uh, they end up taking. Uh, oh, there's another shot. Is that the one? That's a about? great shot. That's mm. also not quite finished yet, um, yeah. but you can see like how big it is. Um, I mean, this the little green pad there, kind of in the middle next to the rock wall. That's you know wider than my hips, and I sit on it. It so mm. gives you an idea how big it is. Well, you know, what what impressed me was the different compartments that were built within the yeah in the yeah. Section. And that was something we never expected to find. Mm. Um, you know, when we first went at it, we were trying to find, you know, four walls to define it. And we really mm. just thought, okay, we'll find a corner here. We'll find a corner here. From that data, we can extrapolate how big it is. It'll be great. Yeah, no, I, have then, seen, I have seen pictures of, of the... Chamber, and then we found another chamber and it was just, it was unbelievable. Mm. I've seen pictures of, of the indigenous dugouts in, in, uh, in the West Coast of Canada. And some mm -hmm. of those did have some chambers in them. There were some, yeah. some, there was some division, but not to that extent. Yeah. Not, not that I'm going to call it fancy or detailed. Like this is yeah. clearly a change in size and shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, I'm trying to think we did talk about this on the show. Mm -hmm. um, the, the way part of it was made was very um, reminiscent of Acadian, not that it was built by Acadians, but it was mm. sort of reminiscent of that style where they, they cut into the earth and then they built the stone walls and then sort of filled it back in. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's the other extra chambers there mm. um, were built in a completely different way. And so we don't know if they were like older additions or what, but it was just, it was a very cool site. Laird did say that he thought that it could be used industrially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, I when I hear that, I'm thinking <laughs> a lot of people, you know. Yeah, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> we went back and forth over this all season. Like, all of us, like, every single one of us had a differing opinion on what it was. My favorite, though, was Moya saying that it was a church that was dedicated to the golden cabbages that <laughs> yeah. Samuel Paul grew on his property. So that's, oh, yeah. that's it for I me. Was, like there's I, I was no convinced. better winning theory on what this was used for. Yeah, I was convinced yeah. for the longest time yeah. that, it, that, that it was going to be a pit house, but it, it's yeah. Yeah. far more detailed than a pit house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's incredibly different. I've, um, you know, I, I haven't done a lot of full structures. Um, 
but yeah, I've never seen anything like this one. It was wild. <laughs> yeah. This is, and it's this big. Is really and it's big. Good. Yeah, it's, it's very big. Huge, yeah. yeah. And 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 I think they talked about the uh the fact that it was covered up or had been like purposely yeah. covered. So it filled yeah. in, yeah. Purposely yeah. filled in. Yeah, up. both yeah. of both of the structures on lot five had definitely been purposely covered all in one period of time. Um, because we know this because the fill material was all dated to a period of time. So yep. Yeah. That's what really gets me too. If you, think, that, if you think that that fill might have been pulled from as far away as the money pit, like that's a lot of work. I don't know. Really? Yeah, I mean, it is probably about a quarter mile away from the money pit. Mm. Um, I kind of thought that it was possible that, you know, <laughs> this is going to sound terrible, but in general, humans are relatively lazy, right? Like they don't want to go out of their way to get something to fill it in. So exactly. I kind of generally felt that maybe it was sort of pulled here and there and mm. um and kind of filled in. But some of the massive rocks that we had pulled out of there, mm. they had to come from somewhere. Like mm -hmm. they weren't just laying on the ground there. So Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but you know, you think about the fact that if it if it was purposely, and and I go with your opinion on that, that it was, but purposely filled in, then you it begs the question as to why. Why would you exactly. fill it? You know, yeah, if, in, in, I mean, if that just, really is the million dollar question or the right. protection multi just, million dollar question. If you're just exiting the island, you don't care. Yeah. Leave it. You know, what do you care? So you're going to yeah. walk away and go live somewhere else or sail away or whatever. Yeah. And there's no indication it. that that lot was ever used agriculturally. Right. So it wasn't like, oh, they covered it up so that their animals didn't trip and fall in a big hole or something. There you go. Good um, point. There was no indication that it was filled slowly over time, like it was used as a trash mitten. This right. was all put in at once. So, like, it was very much like we know for a fact somebody purposely covered this. We just yeah, can't. So I mean, move. what are your what options? Are your options are your your options are you're either trying to hide it. Right? Yeah. Right. And if you're not trying to hide it, then you're just trying to bury it so no one else gets to use it. Yeah. A and lot again, of work. It's a lot of work to go through just to have someone not use it. Exactly. Uh, thank you, by the way, Lieutenant Columbo. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. If you're just, if you're just, you know, if you're just leaving, what do you care if anybody uses it? I mean, really, in the end, I, mean, I don't know. But it's yeah, it I means... mean, even to this day, you know, people will just abandon structures and let them fall down on their own. They don't go yeah. through the trouble of removing the structure above ground and covering up everything below ground. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. So, you know, that means, you know, that there has to be, you know, more to this than that. Uh, did you find any evidence of a roof under the fill? Uh, did they... I don't know if I'm allowed to answer that question. Okay. We All never right. really discussed it on the show. I would love oh, yeah. to answer that question, but I, I don't think that I'm allowed to. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you, you know, it's, uh, again, um, you know, hopefully we'll see some more, a little bit more of lot five for the end. I'd like to see. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I hope they show it completely excavated. That's where I was <laughs> headed next. Thank you. And the, and the, date, the, date, Chad, it's fine. <laughs> the dates that they put on that button. I mean, 16, 1700. Yeah. I mean, we know everybody and their dog was running around Oak Island in the 16 and 1700s. But if you can get back as far as the 1300s, then your your suspect pool gets a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. See, this is the problem that I have as an archaeologist. So we tend to go with median dates. We mm -hmm. don't typically pick, oh, well, what's the oldest it could be? And the show always drives for that. They always want to know oh, what's sure. the earliest possible date. And for us, we're like, okay, sure, it could go back to the 12 or 1300s but it's more likely to fit in the context of the rest of the artifacts that we're finding in the area, which are the 16 and 1700s, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah. So you kind of need to take a test that lead to see if it matches. In I area. know that's where I was just yeah, I really hope they send it out for some further analysis. Yep. 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 Yeah. Cause you know, we know that lead can be traced down to its origins, uh, you know, and that's a, that's a, another amazing thing. I won't go into it too deeply there, but you look at the the way that uh, there's a database that runs around the world of all the stuff and how you can yep. match it up. That's amazing to me. A great thing. I'm glad they do that, but it is truly amazing that they 
yeah. to have that database so that people can trace and go, well, wait a minute, that leads from the south of France and we've got mm -hmm. it over here in Nova Scotia. Well, you know, you know, why? So interesting stuff uh, for sure. Um, so next they run over and uh, we see them jump over to the lab uh, and uh, Emma, um, archaeometallurgist, and getting a chance to take a look at uh, this artifact. Uh, and do her scan. My favorite people all in one room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, look at them. <laughs> yep. Um, and there it is again, laying on the table, or a little shot of it that they took for for us in uh, in our world. And again, you know, there you go with that. You know, again, I didn't had no idea. Even looking at this here, you know, I would think this is more of a of a of a, um, a mat uh, earthing material rather than a metal. Um, never would have guessed yeah. that, but lead and tin. Um, but then they did, whoops, then they did the scanning on it. And that's where, you know, it kind of got me. Um, you know, Laird said about it being a cast button of a starburst design and said that, you know, he found uh, the only ones he found to compare it to were dated the 16 to 1700s. But some examples go back to medieval times. Yeah. What's your, what's your thoughts on that real quick, Jamie? I mean, what do you think? Is that I'm, um, I'm not sure if he was referring to the design goes back or the type oh, of button. Yeah. Um, I never got a chance to ask him that and to, you know, kind of clarify. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think it's interesting because fashion, which, is, well, let's face it, that's what this is. Mm -hmm. Fashion oh, is absolutely. one of these things that tends to change quite rapidly over the years. You know, things go in and out of fashion and some things never return. And so if it was the design he was talking about, I find that particularly interesting because for a design to stay in fashion for, you know, roughly four or 500 years, maybe even 600 years, if we're really stretching it, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That means that it meant something to somebody. Typically, we only see symbols stick around that long when they're like you know attached to a religious order or you know to like maybe a government mm -hmm. order or something yep. um but if he's just talking about the the way it was made still pretty interesting you would think at some point it would have phased out so right did, did he say that that was cast in a mold yeah, uh, yeah so mm -hmm. the the piece of tin is already sort of formed Mm -hmm. And then they take that and put it in the lead, and then it's cast into it. So that's like literally wrapping over top of the tin. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, medieval times, you know. I and again, you're right. He did not clarify that. Uh, Jamie, have any of the staff working on this project used AI analysis on any of the measurements? Measurements for what? Please clarify. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, let me, let me we don't a use a lot of AI. We do use uh, photogrammetry um, and, you know, like ArcGIS and that kind of thing. Um, but I'm not quite sure what he means by measurements. So, yeah, maybe he'll got a second here. He can clarify. clarify. <laughs> yeah, on the measurements there. But, um, um, yeah, so that again, uh, interesting. If, you know, and like I was wondering if that, you know, if that the lead and the tin. Uh, makeup would have been from the or the design, you know, whichever. Um, yeah. From the from that date period, so yeah, hard to say. Um, one thing that uh, what one thing that I caught that Marty had said, and I wrote down his quote here, uh, was that he made the com oh uh, general trends from different types of measurements looking for correlations. Oh. Um that's sort of out of my realm. Um, I don't know if that's something that they'll look into. One of the things that we discussed was that like my feature in particular um, wasn't quite lined up with, um, you know, North and South, but that if we had placed it a few hundred years earlier, it may have been lined up exactly, but that's about all we did as far as, correlations to direction or anything like that so um, again, what I was saying uh, that lot about lot five, and I like to catch these little quotes that these guys make, especially Rick and Marty. Um, but Marty had made the comment. He said that lot five. He said this was this item was a game changer for lot five. Things don't fit very well 
for one period of occupation. And I and we've talked about the multi-generational use of Oak okay. Island or Lot 5 or whatever, but I thought that was, again, a very good because it – and it's so true. And, and you know as well as anyone, Jamie, about how the things that you found on Lot 5 spread out over such a large – yeah, and I, it's not it's not just lot five. The things that we found all over the island, um, you know, prior to my being there, you know, in the last eleven years, certainly yeah. speaks to you know multi generations. Mm -hmm. um, now, I I can't say for sure if that has anything to do with the treasure or buried treasure or finding treasure right, or whatever, right. but um, but I mean, we have you know archaeological record that shows multiple times people have come and gone. You know, and there's mm -hmm. there's got to be a reason for it, right? Like, there are, and when was it? During Morris's survey of Oak Island, when they originally split the lots, um, I think it was what 1785. Uh, anyway, at the time, right. the the rumor is that there were over 300 islands in Mahone Bay. So, what makes yeah. this island so special? Out of the 300 islands, this is the one that they decide, oh, okay, we're going to break this one into lot, and all of these people are going to come and live here. Like, why? It doesn't make any sense unless there's a reason for it that preceded Charles or, or Charles Morris's survey. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, Oak Island is a wonderful example of what <coughs> is known as a layered history. Oh, for sure. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt about that. So hopefully, like you said, hopefully we'll see more about Lot 5 because, uh, it you know, ever since they purchased that lot with all the Roman coins and the different things, it's just been, it's been really, really, really interesting and has added so yep. much to this whole, uh, the whole thing, the whole mystery and, and uh, the, 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 the history that could very well be changing our history books the way they were written here. So um, love that stuff. Absolutely. Um, so next in the show, um, they get to jump over. You, you saw last week they were talking to Emiliano and Corian, and they were talking about um, Professor Giaspani. Um, and uh, so they were getting ready to head over uh, to overseas. Um, <laughs> Off to Italy. Hey, look who's here. Carmen, how you doing, sir? Carmen Leg. Hey, Carmen. Uh-oh. Can you hear us? Your mute guess, button might be on. Well, there you go. There it is. It's working. Hi, you know, you uh you've got a lot going Hi, on Jamie. these days. <laughs> Good to see you. You've got a lot going on these days. With your uh with your website, you got a website. Yeah. Hey, yeah, we're getting a little bit of lag from you. I see you you gotta work on that internet connection. Yeah, you here. Too, Jamie. Say that again. Yeah, he's kind of uh, like. Uh, it's good to see you, Jamie. It's good to see you too. So yeah, I wanted uh, Carvin to pop in here for a second because a right. uh, couple. Yeah, couple of, been yeah, he's got a, he's got we got a little bit of lag, so bear with us on that. But Carvin's got his website up and yeah. running now. And he's also got a YouTube channel going that you're going to have some interesting videos coming out on uh, coming up. And we're looking at some new stuff in May. Is that when it's all coming about? Uh oh, can you hear us? Okay. I can, but I'm you're sure. lagging quite a bit. Okay. Yep. So tell us a little bit about your uh, your YouTube channel, if you want. Okay, well, I have a uh, YouTube channel called, uh, well, look here, which is what I use. Uh, it's called, well, look here. Yep. And... Uh, yeah. You're gonna be doing. Just, you're gonna be doing interviews with people around the area. <laughs> yes, uh, the uh, interviews coming up in May will be featured with uh, Danny Henniger, who I consider ah, Mr. Yeah. Oak Island. He seems to know a lot. Mr. Oak Island. 
Yep, you uh, actually took me uh, and Christina over to his house that one night, and I want to thank you again for that very much because it got me the opportunity to meet Danny. Uh, and then we went to his uh, his little museum that he's got set up, which was very interesting as well. Oh, I think he's having trouble hearing us. <laughs> But if you guys, uh, I'm going to just tell you, uh, and also, uh, I think, uh, Carmen, uh, uh, we talked a little bit about this artifact that uh, was floating around uh, last couple of weeks uh, that kind of looked like a piece of metal that was uh, a guy had at his house that was given to him by his father. Um, and you said you know what it was, but you weren't going to tell us. Oh, no, yeah, well, having... I, I know exactly what it is, but I can't really say too much about it because I don't know which direction the show is going to go with it. Um, right. You know, I don't know right. if they're going to discuss it more or they're <laughs> going to do some more research or it or not. But if, 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 if anybody's interested and, you know, give them some time, I will let everybody know what it is. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to want to know. I, I'll, give you, I'll give you a little hint, just a small little hint. Okay. Um, it will be the oldest item found on the island island to date. You really believe that? You think it's older than the lead cross? Oh yes, certainly. Wow. Huh? Wow. <laughs> now All right, we'll just wrap it up here then. We'll just... <laughs> Right. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> that is a great tease right there. So uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. So when you are allowed to talk about it, I can't wait. I'd love to hear from. You. And you're right. They may they may discuss it more because uh, when they went over to see it uh, at that guy's house, I can't remember his name now for the life of me. Wolerski, uh, Wolowski. Yeah. Something like that. Wasn't he? Yeah. Part, wasn't his father the partner of uh, Dunfield? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what I thought. Yes. Air, oh, there it is. Or Linda put it up Ro for us. Rokoski. Ro Ro <laughs> yeah, Rokoski. Eric Rokoski, who is the son of the man who got it from, he was a partner with, yeah, Dunfield, Robert Dunfield. Yeah. So, and I guess there was three of them found on the island, and one of them was given to his father, and then it ended up with the son. But I'm really glad that they were able to uh, to to show that. That was really cool. So, all right, great tease. We'll we'll wait to hear from you on that, uh, Carmen. And uh, also, folks, like I said, if you have an opportunity, check out Carmen's website. It's CarmenLeg.com. And also, uh, uh, I was trying to think that it's your name that you got going on here with. Um, well, look at here. <laughs> well, yeah, the website is uh, Carmen Leg, small letters. Yep. Dot com. Uh, it has a lot of information about blacksmithing, auction, and, of course, Oak Island, how it got started, and so on and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. The YouTube channel is called, well, look here with Carmen Leg. Uh, it's going to have some deeper dives about Oak Island. Uh, one thing I got in my mind is I would, after this season ends, I'll go over the last three years oh, wow. and kind of pick out some artifacts that were shown to me, mm -hmm. and I will uh, do a little video or a blog explaining what the art artifact was for, how it was made, who made it. Uh, uh, just just a deeper dive into different things. Also, um, on the YouTube channel will be things about blacksmithing. And uh, I might even demonstrate how some of these items were made and make oh, wow. them. Uh, and, uh, of course, oxen as well. That's awesome. Can't wait for that. That's really interesting. And I love the fact, and you and I have talked about this when you were on the show previously, about keeping the traditional blacksmithing alive, keeping that 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 uh, the that art. I'm going to call it an art, but that keeping that alive and teaching that to people. I think that's fantastic. I'm really I really appreciate you doing that. I, I kind of like it myself, even though I'm so you know I've only done it a few times. Um, but I, I really appreciate the fact that you're keeping that alive, that tradition. And Carmen, Last you, week, Carmen, you've got another book that's due to come out sometime? Yes, it's coming out sometime between mid-May and the 1st of April. Uh, 1st of oh. June, I mean. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and about keeping the uh, tradition alive, last week, a uh, weekend, last weekend, I was really alive because I did 114 shoes in a weekend. 
Um, oh I believe God. it will be the last ox shoes that I will make. Oh, really? Wow. Why is I, that? I will continue. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm just getting tired of making ox shoes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, love, I want to teach. I want to teach you, Jeff, how to make. Yeah. Ox okay. Shoes. All right. Well, I'll be up there in August. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh man. So anyway, check out his site, uh, his YouTube channel, yeah. and uh, be tuned. Uh, be, make sure to tune in in May uh, when he starts. And again, uh, Jamie had the opportunity. We showed. Uh, uh, talked about that a little bit last week to meet uh, Danny Henniger. Uh, and I was very pleased to meet Danny. I know Tom has met him yeah. also and been out to I, the museum. I can, I can safely say that if, if you're going to have Carmen and Danny on a YouTube channel video, you are going to want to listen to it. Yep. Having spent Absolutely. half a day with Danny at his museum and then going out and looking at a few <clears throat> local grave sites and then half a day with Carmen down, at New, or down in uh, uh, Ross Farms. Two guys that are a wealth of knowledge, <laughs> wealth, wealth of knowledge that you you need to hear and see. Yep, absolutely. I, I can tell you right now, when you watch the interviews that I do with Danny, you will uh, come to learn things about Oak Island that no one knew before. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. So if you uh, you know care to do so, please like, share, subscribe, mm -hmm. so on. I've already subscribed and I encourage yep. anyone else out there. Yep. To I'm check already it out. Well, look -a there. Well, look -a here. Well, look -a well, here. here. Yep. When yep. somebody comes in my shop or uh, somebody comes up to me, I had three people come up to, to me today in uh, Bridgewater. I was out there looking at some artifacts that somebody found in their backyard. Hmm. Um, that's what I say. Well, look -a here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you say that on the show. Exactly, too. Yeah. When, when they come walking in the door, you're like, oh, well, look -a here. Who's here today? <laughs> <laughs> when they come walking in to see it. You know, yeah, you've been going to them lately. Uh, and obviously, um, um, you know, instead of in driving out your uh, uh, blue Corvette out there, on a, you still have the blue Corvette, right? Or did you sell that? I, I do. It's in the shop. I'm bringing it out tomorrow. Ah, very good. <laughs> so you'd be tooling around. Yeah. Oxman, you, yeah, on the license plate, you'll see him cruising around all over the place. So, well, thank That's you very great. much, Carmen. I appreciate your coming on with us and sharing that information. We can't wait to hear uh, about this artifact. I know I'm, I'm excited. So well, very thank good. you very much. Have all a great right. night. Yeah, thank great you, to see you, Carmen. See you later, Jamie. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Well, there you go, Mr. Carmen Lake. Oh, that was really cool. Man, he, the he ox man just, himself. The ox man himself, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> Carmen's a great guy. We really appreciate him mm -hmm. and uh, and all that he his knowledge. Uh, you know, and like a you know Carmen dating. I saw a couple of people make that comment in the uh, in the chat here. Carmen dating, uh, absolutely, because when he tells you about an item, uh, you can rest assured that he he knows what he's talking about. So. <laughs> Man, what a what a great guy! I would love to train, be his apprentice. And the I'm great thing about him is when Carmen says this is, you know, a, a certain type of nail or a certain type of tool, he can tell you why he knows it's that type of tool. Yes, exactly. Yep. Right. It's just not a picture in his mind. He can tell you from the make makeup, the structure, the shape, the grains yeah. that the iron, the grains the iron's running in or whatever. That this is what makes it that. It's not just you know, oh, this is one of those. Well, yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely, Coach. Two <laughs> celebrities for the price of one. You betcha. Is this celebrity here today? Yeah, Ooh. you. <laughs> you. <laughs> You're a world a... famous archaeologist now. You know, whether you like it or not, you are. <laughs> Everybody's jumping in, saying they signed up. Good deal. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to see about that. So, all right, let's let's continue on. Okay. Uh, Overseas team... we go. Yep, yep. We got to get moving here. We're we're running out of time. Mm -hmm. So the team took off and they went over to Italy. And and again, uh, this was when Emiliano and Car uh, Corian Mall were talking to them on screen, and saying that they needed to come over because they found some more interesting information for them. And again, we've talked about this before about how they really need to see this stuff because if you're going to if you're going to tie anything in from from Europe. Uh, or Portugal, whatever, or you over in Europe, over to um, the Americas, North America, you need to go over there and see that and see how it relates or see how they match up with stuff over here. And that's exactly what they're doing. Uh, 
and over here, and I'm I was that it was that Morimondo? Morimondo? Is that how I hope I'm pronouncing that correct? I have close enough. Right. Close enough. Yeah, we're gonna move on. Italy. Over in Italy. Uh yep, and then they go over here to this particular place here. This is the Ormondo Abbey, a 12th century abbey that was built by the Cistercian monks. Uh, Professor Gaspani has suggested that whoever built Nolan's Cross was close to um, um, monastic circles. You know, and and uh, so I went out, you know, I, I look at this here, and again, Cistercians. Okay, I've heard that before. Gretchen Cornwall has talked about it. Yeah. Uh, and brought it up before, but I, I really, I had to have a, a look for myself. Um, they are a member of the Roman Catholic monastic order. So now remember that, you know, when you, cause they were talking about how they are tied with the Templars. Okay. And so, and remember how the Templars were initially formed. They were initially formed by the Catholic church, a Catholic church, uh, got them together to help protect the pilgrims that were going, or the, the people traveling down to the Holy Land, right? Mm -hmm. And the date, they were founded in 1098. So the time frame is right. Everything matches up. The Catholic Church, it all lines up. So to say that's a stretch, because a lot of people say, no, they didn't have nothing to do with each other. Uh, I bear to differ. And you've got scholars that are telling us that they have. Um, and that's why um, the timing is right. The, the the like I said, the Catholic Church is all there, and the founder Bernard of Clairvaux was was with both of them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, to say it was a stretch is it's not a stretch at all. Um, and so here they come out here to this abbey, and I wanted to point out something. You know, they they they're talking about some of these little um, things that are these little pieces that are uh, mounted up here on the front. As one of the first things that they talked about on here. Uh, whoop, I get a picture out of order there. Um, oh, that, but I wanted to show this. Tom had shared a picture, uh, and I wanted to bring that up here. And it was talking about the very front of this abbey. And he picked out, he's, he's, he notices stuff that I don't uh, catch quite often. And here's one of those examples right here. Um, what did you, you want to point out? What yeah, so heard? I looked at it last night and I go, there's something different about the front of this building. Everything on the on the on the front of the building is symmetrical. Yep. So if you've got, you know, two white windows on the side of a circle, two left and right windows, everything's centered. It's symmetrical. But look at the white half moon shapes at the top along the eave. Yeah, okay? all the way so running down. On the left hand eave, when you get to the bottom of the corner, they don't continue. And that whole column structure, all the way down the left hand side is different than the column structure on the right-hand side. So why did they build it that way? It's not a matter of, it's, it's not a repair job because from the ground up, you've got a solid uh, column on the left-hand side that's not on the right-hand side. And it's the front of the same building. Yeah. So any of you decoding experts out there that know why they would do that, let us know. Yeah, get on it. Yeah, find out why. Uh, I've this... counted. I've counted the number of circles, and I've tried to do as much of a Jake Roberts job on it as I can for <laughs> numbers, and I, I got nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, it's very interesting. I hadn't caught that, and I'm usually pretty good at catching these mm -hmm. things, and I didn't catch that at all. Uh, completely missed it on that one, mm -hmm. but uh, he's right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, coach. Yeah, coats are definitely decorative plates. Oh, in the center, yes. But uh, we were talking about the ones at the top, so I don't know. Yeah. If anybody has any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Yeah. Why are these Why are these little things on this corner not on this side over here? And the and the support column at the corner of the building is different. Yeah. Yeah. The the support column. Yeah. Exactly. It is different. Yep. Mm. So yeah, everybody get looking for that um, and find out and see if you can tell us why mm -hmm. uh, why that is. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They kept everything symmetrical except that. Interesting. Um, all right. So let me go back. Uh, let's see where we were in our pictures here. All right. Yeah. Here's that. Now you can see it again here on the front view. You can see the same thing right there. You can see them here, but not over here. Mm -hmm. hmm. I mean, I would be inclined to guess that that front view that we're looking at isn't actually original. 
it looks like it's a later addition because the monastery itself is actually much more narrow than that because that's why those two windows up there are open because they're not actually on the wall. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, interesting observation. Um, they were talking about these uh, his alignment, and this is where um, Professor Giaspani uh, really excels at, is talking about his celestial uh, alignments. And you heard uh, him talking a bit about what is, you know, uh, above, same as below, uh, below, same as above, um, you know, talking about that. And so, but, you know, we talked about how they, they use the stars uh, as their guidance for, in, you know, for on land as well as on the sea. Uh, everything was about the stars uh, for them and lining things up. Um, and so, you know, they, they go back and they talk about this, the fact that uh, Nolan's cross is important uh, in all of this, as well as um, uh, these other stone piles. And, and again, it was interesting to hear uh, Tom Nolan talk about these stone piles uh, and as them being pyramidal uh, stone piles at one time. And so, and you look at, we saw them and they don't look anything like that now. Now they look like just a gathering of rocks in one area. And he pointed out that they, they had, he goes, well, I mean, we dug, you know, they, they dug in those holes. They wanted to see what was under them. So they kind of dismantled them to dig under them. Well, that makes sense. And I'm glad he pointed that out yep. because they really didn't look like any kind of a resemblance of a little pyramid to me uh, at this point, but they did at one time, which was really um, I'm glad he. I'm glad he said that. So, um, yeah. here they are all standing out front. Uh, here's the plates that they were talking about on the front of the building, um, the abbey, uh, and you can see some of these. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, yes, they were, so you were talking about the cemetery. This bothered me because of the A cemetery. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's in the middle. <laughs> yeah. They should have had this one on the this one on top and this one here on the on the bottom. <laughs> the fish in the middle and then the two uh, a feather. I thought they were like a feather or something on either side, right? So it was all. They remind you of as a feather, yeah. All jacked up there, but yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of thought these were like a feather. And if you take that that cross with the four dots and the feather, where have we seen that before? Or tobacco mm. leaf? Thank you. Yep, tobacco leaf. That's yeah, Linda. So where have we oh. seen that before? The Overton Stone. The Overton Stone, exactly. That's what mm -hmm. I thought when I saw this. I was thinking Overton Stone all mm -hmm. all the way, and they never even yeah. mentioned that. There was no fish on the Overton mm -hmm. Stone that I recall. No, no, I went and looked at the Overton Stone today too, just to compare for myself. The feather was a was a or tobacco leaf, or whatever. They were different shapes, but the yeah. idea is the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly where I went was the Overton stone. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Cat got that too. Yep. yep. And you saw the HO stone. That's where you get that, uh, that you know, the, the cross with the four dots, you know, like these here, uh, the cross with four four dots uh, from that. So, and that was also, didn't, and they had that also, but it had a circle around it on the Overton stone, correct? Is that, I don't have a picture handy of the Overton stone, but it had a, it had the cross. Yeah. With the four dots with the circle around it, didn't it? I thought yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so I don't have that handy here, but anyway. Um, uh, and then he went and looked inside and again, it's beautiful this thing inside. I mean, these are fantastic places. Um feather headdress. Oh yeah. Uh, and of course the Templar Cross. They saw this Templar Cross in several places inside this the Abbey. Um so, I mean, obviously, uh, and here was one of the, a pillar. This was over actually in the other room um, that they, uh, um, I'm looking for the name of that room because I, I completely forgot about, I forgot the name of it all of a sudden. Oh, the illumination room. I think that's yeah. the scripture, the scripture room or something. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's where, the, that's where they, the monks would write the, the manuscripts. Yep. Scriptorium, yeah. Scriptorium, Good thank you. Coach. Yeah, scriptorium. That's thank a really you. nice picture of Emiliano, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you get a chance to meet him? I did. I adore Emiliano and his wife, Kat. They're lovely, lovely people. Yeah, because you were there, and uh, he was on the island, of course, a couple times, so that's really cool. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so you saw right here on this uh, on this wall, on this pillar right here, you see what looks like the tree of life mm -hmm. um and i thought it was interesting what's under it 
And I was trying to figure out exactly what this was right here. Um, and it almost looked to me like maybe a tomb. I, I was kind of adding, I was saying, you know, maybe it was yeah. some sort of like a tomb or something. Tomb or a tunnel. And then the and two, I've yeah. seen too much Star Wars. All I could see was the Mando looking figure to the left of the Tree of Life. I was trying to figure <laughs> like, out what Mando's been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was trying to figure out exactly what this was. I've seen this symbol before somewhere. Anybody? Yeah, that's what I thought, Coach. Yep, I was going there too. Uh, that's what I was kind of depicting this as the Tree of Life or being Jesus and the tomb below. That's kind of what I. That's kind of how oh, yeah. I, because yeah, it almost looks cool. like it a little bit of a tree of life underneath, inside mm -hmm. of it here, if you can see that, and then then out of it, in it, and then out of it. So that's no, kind of I what I. Distracted by Mando. Yep, that's <laughs> kind of what I. <laughs> but where if you know somebody jump out if you know where you have seen this before this this item right here, um, I've seen this someplace. And I could not place, I couldn't remember where I've seen it. If anybody knows, let us know in the chat uh, if you if you have an idea of where we've seen that before. Um, so. Is that anyone, possibly an oak leaf above it? Remains of an oak leaf? Yeah, it looks like it right here. Yep, that definitely looks like an oak leaf. So. Public transport sign. That's not where I was actually looking, Chris. That's <laughs> <laughs> public transportation sign. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Hazardous uh, material label on the back of a yeah. ship. <laughs> but interesting, you know. And I love looking at all these little things. There was a couple of pictures of uh, of Mar of uh, Rick standing in the tunnels there that I tried to see what it was. I was trying to make out what was on the walls behind him, but I just couldn't get a close enough look at it. Um, to, to point that out. But here they are looking at it again. You've got the cross here with the four dots. Um, then you've got some of these little symbols here. That uh, There's another one with that circle with the line, the T in it. Mando again. Yeah, like, Mando it again. Like the floor de lis next to it. Looks or like that, the yeah. floor de lis. It also got yeah. a small resemblance to the etching in the stone in New Ross. That was on Alexander's property. Yeah. Yeah, it sure is. And here's another one down here on the mm -hmm. bottom. I mean, I, I could spend all day in a place like this. Oh, my gosh. Looking at all these things. I really, really could. You probably spend a lot more than a day. Oh, yeah. Um, one of the things that they talked about in here, and I'm going to show this real quick, was the, uh, and I mentioned this early uh, when they were talking about when they keep bringing up these things that are um, like the illuminated manu manuscripts. I was like, okay, what the heck is that? Uh, and that is this. Glow in the dark. Didn't anybody tell you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they use it glow in the dark ink uh, and all of that. Uh, but this is an illuminated manuscript. It's a manuscript that has drawings and stuff on it, and it's colorful and vibrant and everything. Uh, that's that's simply all it is. Uh, it gives you uh, some sort of, you know, like what looks like strawberries on this one and whatnot. But uh, um, imagine the time on. it would take to do something like that. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. exactly the point, though, is that while they were doing the art, they were ruminating over the passage that was on there. And the point was, while you were, you know, drawing and making it pretty, you were focusing on whatever the message was on that page. So yep. It was supposed to take a long time because you were supposed to really focus. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that's why I had to go look that up because I wanted to see exactly what that was. Um you know, because I, you know, and I thought, well, it has to be some sort of a really cool page. And that's, that's what it was. A very cool page. Um, yep. So next, uh, they headed over to uh, Bianzo, Italy, and they found another little place over here, uh, a Templar. This was, a, again, a, a little Templar fortress uh, that was created over here. Um, and they talked about this alignment and here, here we go again with the alignments of things. And I, and I'm sorry, folks, I, it's just because of my ignorance on these alignments of the stars and stuff, but I have such a hard time putting this together and really accepting it, um, uh, fully. And I'm not going to take away from, uh, professor Giaspani at all, because he's been doing this for lots of years. He's way beyond me on these things. Um, and it's just, like I said, uh, um, 
you know, my ignorance again on these types of things. But you look at something like this, and they were talking about this one line here. They showed it in red, uh, shooting across and then pointing up here um, to the star formation. So that's, you know, which is, you know, where we get the alignment of like Nolan's cross again. Um, you know, putting those stars together like that. So, you it's, know, it's, that's, a, it's, it's interesting stuff. It's interesting stuff for sure. I mean, it, it's way over my head too, no pun intended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's interesting to see how they're able to arrive at those conclusions. So you just have to kind of go with the flow, follow, try and follow their reasoning. And, you know, what they present is what they present. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, like I said, I can't take away um, of, of what they, what they're no, finding. all. You know, because again, I have not studied it. Mm -hmm. But when you take the fact that, when I mentioned this earlier, when you take the fact that um, from, uh, same as above is below and the fact that they are looking at all these things, Cygnus, the swan, yeah, thank you, um, that when they're looking at these things in the night sky, they're matching up, you know, what's on the ground with those. And I, it makes total sense, mm. uh, just like the pyramids in Giza, you know, with the, the belt of Orion and things like that. It, it does make total sense because they're imitating what they see in the sky. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> And honestly, it really does. I mean, if you look at this thing, it really does match up with Nolan's cross in many ways. So, but yeah. like, if I'm if I'm reading that right, like the black line is Signa the Swan, right, and the red line is Nolan's cross. They don't line up. No, not exactly. No, they don't. Like, so, are we sure? Like, it just drives me crazy. Yep. Yeah, I know. It's, it's such a I don't want to say far out there theory, but like, no. it's just so wild to me. I, I can't wrap my mind about any of this. Oh, yeah, but like if I, you're telling me, oh, this lines up, then I want it to line up. Yeah, <laughs> I, could, I agree. It should, it should line up. You know? so that's why I say you just have to kind of follow along with their line of thought. And, you know, what you believe or don't believe or accept is, yeah. you know, up there. It's like any other theory. It's just a theory that you don't, a person like me doesn't normally see or follow. So that makes it even more confusing. Yep. Yeah, there you go. Zig said it right there. Even Marty said, this man has a three PhD and he can build his own astrological positioning device. <laughs> He's the man. Yeah, I agree. Because he did. He did build one. Um, and this one, this was another one of those things where uh, this was Doug had pointed out the, uh, uh, the what is the eight pointed star. Yeah, um, that he was seeing everywhere inside here, and this yeah. was in the, the um, in this other building that they went to look at, uh, and so you know he was seeing these all over the place, and it matched up with what uh, was on the ground. Yeah, um, the Bedford Stone. Yeah. Rock. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Bedford Stone. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I've seen that Bedford Stone. I've been there. Yeah. Have you really? Yeah, Terry DeVoe took us there. Oh, see, yeah, I I didn't get to hang out with Terry when I was there. I've got to do that next time, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. And, and yeah, Kat mentioned this too. They were talking about this last night about finding that on like quilts and stuff. You see that, that, that diagram all over the place. Um, yep. I've seen it on barn signs, you know, mm -hmm. barn, those, I've uh, seen carvings of blues cap here in New Brunswick that yep. have that exact same symbol on it. You know, and then you go back to, uh, you know, where did the Mi'kmaq get this from? And of course they said, possibly, from Europeans that came over and, you know, showed them that stuff. And that's where they got it from. Could be, it's plausible, you know, can't deny that it isn't, uh, but, uh, from what I can the tell. Other thing, the story, other thing to consider too is right. I mean, we, we automatically assume that the Mi'kmaq got that symbol from someone else. What if someone else got that symbol from the Mi'kmaq? Mi'kmaq were good. around a lot longer. That's yep. a very transfer good of information goes both ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. All right. If that's if that star is used as a navigational seasonal tool, who's to say that they the Mi'kmaq learned it from somebody from Europe? Yep. Yeah. From what I can tell, it's similar to how they place things on uh, for the solstice. Uh, it lines up with the star or sun comes up from the horizon of mm -hmm. specific dates. Yeah. Yep. Very very interesting. And again, as we know with Stonehenge and many other places, that's exactly what they did. Um, I said that like a solar compass. Yeah, that's April said that. There you go. Mm -hmm. 
exactly. A solar compass. All right. There's Bedford, you know, in relation to Oak Island, where that was. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to see that. That was, I, I did get to uh, see the Gloose Capstone. But, um, and then this real little device right here, they were talking about this thing. Um, and I think they were calling this the, um, and uh, shoot, I, I was looking at it and I tried to Google it and Google was not finding uh, a better. Uh, the other thing, too, you, you look at the symbols on that device. Uh -huh. If you've ever looked at any Mi'kmaq symbols or, or, or printings, like some of those symbols, I, and I haven't gone back and looked at it, but some of them are pretty close. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. It really is. Abet or Abet or Abet or. Yeah, these symbols are really interesting. And again, I, I, you know, this one. I the only one I thought. Oh, this looks like a flag mounted on a on a boat or something. Yeah. Or a on a boat. Rings been there. <laughs> That's the only one that I could come up with. The rest of them are just gibberish in my head. So you got extra large down here, you know. Yeah. yeah. I like the little upside down martini glass there at the bottom. That's my mm -hmm. favorite. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need one. another drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're watching this show, you need a drink, a stiff drink for sure. Oh my god, I would totally, totally do the whole Stargate thing. Like that's one of my favorite, like you know, media archaeologists out there is the Stargate series. So yep. Abator. Abator. Okay. Linda's doing it phonetically for me. So I can Abator. Abator. All right. Cool. Thank you, Linda. Appreciate that. She always keeps me in line. Um, and, it, you know, and I thought about the holes that were in it when he, and you do see these little marks right here. There is like four little spots where it looked like there were holes in it. And so uh, when uh, Professor Giaspani uh, did his, he put the four little holes in the right places. And then you could use it for uh, an alignment tool. Mm hmm. I just, I. How did they come up with this stuff? I can't understand it. No matter what I do, I'm like, okay. So he put some toothpicks and some holes in in a piece of metal, and somehow that circumnavigates the globe. Like, yeah, exactly. How? Like, I just don't get how it. How do you know? How do you know which peg to use on what day? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, yeah. However, and back. Like, Back what, in, but if you break a peg off and one shorter, like, do you end up in Egypt instead of Canada? <laughs> like, what happens? I need to know. Should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. Yeah, Albuquerque, exactly. Yeah, Darn that Albuquerque. <laughs> yep. Yeah, an astrolabe. Yeah, that, that's another one of those things. But again, if you look at the face of that, you get your eight pointed star on there as well, right? So, yep, exactly. Yes, you do. I don't know. I really uh again back in the day when those tools were used when when those tools were used back in the day, there was no I mean that's what you did. There was no TV, there was no internet, there was no anything. That's what you were trained to do, and that's all you did twenty four seven. Yep. I like that ancient cracker barrel peg game, the little the little teas, the golf teas. <laughs> uh this plate is cool. They have those buttons on the on the ground at Hoover Dam uh, to show the planetary alignment. Yep. Hmm. Oh, Robert, duck season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, duck season, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, so, all right. So what we before we go here, uh, we are going to uh, do our giveaway real quick. I know we're uh, later in the show than we normally would, but uh, we're going to do that real quick. Uh, here, I'm going to go grab the picture of our giveaway again and talk about that briefly. Uh, and we'll get Linda on here, and she's going to do the giveaway for us. Hopefully, I don't. I don't know if she, she was. Hasn't <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't left us. She hasn't. She hasn't taken Linda, off. Are you still up? <laughs> <laughs> Linda's quit. <laughs> yep, Linda's gone. She had enough of this. All right, this is our giveaway, and what this is, uh, we've got this book from James McQuiston. It's his uh, book that he wrote. Uh, Curse. Curses, Codes, and Secret Societies from James A. McQuiston. Mm -hmm. And also... I have, a, I have that book. It's a good book. Yep. For anybody wants too. to know. And yeah, I have, have that, the, uh, this little you, ornament here. Go ahead. Ornament. It's also, also got a magnet on the back of it. Yep. And it's on my fridge right over there, if you can see it. But Yep. And I got and mine. The magnet works well. It's not one of these little things that's going to fall off your fridge when you slam the door or anything. It's, it's, it's well built. Yep. And it's funny because this is actually a, a picture uh, of a church... Uh, um, um, 
uh, stained glass, stained glass window. window. Here, and I actually thought that it almost looks like Gretchen on the. <laughs> I thought it was Joan of yeah. Arc first. Joan of Arc. Like, oh, oh, there you go. go. Joan of Arc. for a night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought it was good. Oh, so there you go. That's how, that's how I digress. Uh, anyway, to uh, be eligible to get one of our giveaways, you have to be a member of our Facebook group page, A Curse of Oak Island and Beyond, hyphen Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, you need to be a member. And Linda will put up the picture of the following week's uh, giveaway and as a post. You comment on the post and simply say yes as a comment. That's all you got to do. And then you'll be entered into the spin to win. Spin to win. And uh, spin, to win. Gonna, uh, spin to win. Uh, so we're going to spin for that now. We're going to find out who wins. You must be or you must be uh, here uh, at the podcast to win also. So we'll spin it, find out who wins. You got to be in it to win it. You got to be in it to win it. So you got to <laughs> let us know right away if you're here. So. All right, you ready, Linda? Yep, I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right. Oh, we can see this one much better. Kevin hey, Phillips. Kevin Pick up. Phillips. Let us know you're here, Kevin. Yeah, and Bill Burns, sorry Kevin. you didn't win, but if you want to borrow my magnets on time, I'm sure I could uh, lend it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you, so book, you know, I could give you the book on a short-term loan. <laughs> All right. What do you mean I'm here, <laughs> Robert? Come on, Robert. He's always trying. Yeah, he's always trying. I know. Kevin Phillips, Kevin Phillips let us know if you're here. If not, uh, we will... Oh. Nice. I never there went. There he that, is. Is that Kevin? Is that the Kevin? That that is a Kevin. A Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Are you Kevin Phillips? We don't know who you are. Nice. I never win. Well, Kevin, <laughs> flash your ID. There he yeah. is. Yeah. Can yeah. You see oh, the that's license. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> We're going All to right. need two forms of identification. Yeah. <laughs> your sample. <laughs> We're going to send a code to your phone, and you got to enter the code to. Yeah. Uh, Pick out, I'm not a robot. Yeah. Yeah. Pick if out the you bicycle. will send me a private message, I will get this out in the mail to you in the next 48 hours. All right. Send me your the address. Postage is, postage is getting worse now. We see that. It yeah. is much worse. All right. Well, congratulations. Said, last week I had a $34 postage oh. bill sending out. Oh. Well, you know, take that out of the pay you get. So. Yeah, I do. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> put it on your expense statement. Yeah. Put it on your expense statement. Yeah. See if it gets approved. Yeah. Well, it'll get yeah. approved. You won't get paid, but it'll get approved. <laughs> I mean, there's <laughs> that. Yeah, there is that. So. All right. Thank Thanks, you, Linda. guys. All right. All right. Uh, getting back to it. All right. The guys head over to the Netherlands. You know, I never, you know, Corian, you know, from being from the Netherlands, you would have thought that we would have been here long before this to get the team over there <laughs> to look around. Uh, but I tell you what, this would have been a fantastic place for the Templars to go hide um, when uh, when things went awry for them. Uh, and as we know, they, they did. So they go over there to the Netherlands and they hook up with Corian and Jocko uh, Servitant. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. Jack, they went over to see Jack and Corian. Mm -hmm. And they even plugged his book. He did. Yeah, his and uh, Christopher Morford looks, and Corey looks Morford. something like this. Looks just like that one, or like this one right there. Yeah. yeah. And I've read it. Uh, actually, I did. I cheated. I did the audio book version. Fantastic book. I highly. I don't recommend think that's it. cheating. I think you're still absorbing the information. <laughs> well, you know, and I did it on the play. I started reading it. I, I read about half of it. And then I got the audio book because it finally got released. I got the audio book and then I went through it again. Nice. I'm start, I started all over and, and I was on a plane on a flight and uh, two flights and I finished the whole thing. So, yeah, good, good book. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, this is Secret Journey of the Menorah to Oak Island. So, yeah, there you go. You got to check that book out, folks. It's available at Amazon. Um, so there they are all meeting up and talking, and Emiliano went with them over there to have a little trip. Uh, you know, this is one of those places where obviously there's been a lot of people, because um, you see the graffiti, you see the path leading in here. 
Uh, this is one of those places that probably the kids go or anybody else goes to go hang out or um, go run through these tunnels. It's obviously not gated. Uh, you see the graffiti on the walls down here and whatnot. Um, but still, very, very interesting inside. Um, and there's a lot of symbols in here on the walls of this place. Now, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take us through a thing real quick that I'll, I'll mention again. I kind of mentioned it before. But when you are searching for answers and you are thinking that somebody from Europe came over to North America prior to Christopher Columbus, which we know they have, you need to have something that you find over there that matches what's over here. Okay, so a lot of people are like, well, it doesn't mean that they brought treasure over. No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean they brought treasure over if you find these symbols that match up. But it does lead you to believe that there are, that somebody from over there was over here because they brought and they put those symbols that were important to them that were you find in Europe. They put them on the walls over here or carvings or rocks or whatever they put them over here. Mm -hmm. Um so it, because I would say that, that, that when you, if you find a circle with a dot, you can find a circle with a dot probably any place on the face of the earth. But you find a circle with a dot and then a cross with four dots and then they, they just keep adding them up. The odds of coincidental occurrence become far less. Exactly. Zane, I had the exact same question actually, and they didn't talk about it on the show and I was super frustrated. He's asking, did they put the drawings on the ceiling and then they excavated deeper down? Or did they like, you know, I don't know yeah, if there's a ladder or question. something or stand on each other's shoulders? I was dying to know, like, was it there? And then they excavated away. And if so, why, you know, 40 feet down? And yeah. Right. Well, it's, 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 supposed to, it's supposedly a quarry that they hid in, right? Yeah. So yeah. was it a quarry before they used it? And well, if, from if what it was I was. quarry before they used it, then they had to go up mark the ceiling yeah right what i would the and way i if took, they did the drawing and then it was a quarry how much of the drawings have been destroyed because of the quarrying activity I need exactly to know right yeah chicken uh, or the egg yeah right. yeah well the the way i understood this was that the the it wasn't as deep at one time yeah. uh, and they kept quarrying down deeper and deeper until they got to a point where they got the stone that they were looking for the type of stone they were looking for ran out and then they kept on going that's why it has different levels and yeah, that's so the way i understand miles so, of tunnel in there what's that you say there's 15 miles of tunnels in there i if there's a lot uh, i didn't quite catch if there was yeah, that many. Miles. uh is that our, in our notes nope. um but yeah this is really interesting so um he tells the team that quarries were dug by people who might have had connections with the Templars. Seems pretty obvious when you see some of these. Uh, they will be taking a look at 12th century uh, stone quarry. Um, he believes the Templars might have hidden their treasure here before taking it to Oak Island, which is what Corian's book, Corian and Christopher's book, is all about, the menorah. Um, yeah, the limestone was mined from the quarry for the construction of Catholic churches and abbeys in the area and was made up of thousands of tunnels of, yeah, a total of 15 miles underground yeah. passages. Right? So they, so, so they knew to me, it means that they knew it was there and they used it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And there's a lot of symbols. We're going to go through and look at some of these right now. Uh, this one is another one of interest. Uh, you see a little person there holding a staff and a sword. It looks like in one hand and, um, some really interesting stuff in here for sure. Um, again, you know, stuff you would almost see on indigenous peoples, uh, doing some of these with a, like a, a bow and arrow and there was like animals. This looks like, honestly, I, I saw this one right here and I was thinking dinosaur of some sort. I mean, look at the <laughs> bikey back and the legs, the legs on the yeah. bottom. Steve Guptel's diagram of the drill program. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so interesting things. But I want to I want to bring your attention to this one right here. <clears throat> right next to the bird. You see a bird right here. Or what you think of as a bird. But this circle one right here with the lines on it. Looks like a, a wheel, a spoky wheel. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to point that out real quick, too. Um, and also, this one. 
It looks like a person with his head, like he's leaning one side. Mm -hmm. I'll zoom in on that here uh, real quick. With a cross. But it looks like a person right here. And then a, a cross or a sword or something right there. Yeah, there's actually um, a few of those images that, that they're outlined in black, but it looks like they're actually separately etched into the stone. So there's painting as well as etching going on. Right. Yep. And they said it was done with soot. I I, I heard somebody talking about doing it with soot from uh, candles or a burning stick or something, uh, or charcoal. These marks are charcoal, soot from lamp. There you go. Yep. From lamps, candles. Uh, yeah, definitely doable. Um, and now they're up there on the ceiling, so they're, they're, nobody's going to get up there with a ladder and do anything to them. Um, here's another. You're looking at some of these cross with the four dots all over the place. There's um, an example of, of the face etched into yep. just to the right of it. Mm -hmm. And then to the exactly. left of it, there's two more. Yep, two more over here on this side. Um, one of the things that I thought was very interesting, uh, besides they, they play checkers um, or chess, was the uh was these here why all of these dots now and, and if you look at that i mean you you see these in other places uh in, in this whole area these all these dots inside on each side of the four quadrants of this cross and it, it's almost like you know the number is different in each one so that is that what, what does that mean and again Where's Jake Roberts and, and John Edwards when you need them to mm -hmm. actually be able to decipher this uh, and tell us why? Why are they like that? Um, I don't know. So, like, for me, you know, warrior monks are the same as soldiers, right? And boys will be boys. And, like, there's graffiti on Hadrian's wall from way mm -hmm. earlier than this because guys got bored <laughs> and they drew yep. some stuff. And like, I don't doubt that these drawings are Templar related based on the symbolism, right? Like oh, obviously yeah. Templars were there and they mm -hmm. were once responsible for this, but some of this just looks like I got bored and I scribbled on the wall. <laughs> and, like, and I wonder if somebody didn't say, draw the Templar cross and then somebody else, him and his three buddies were playing chess. And this is, Oh, Mike won this one. Tom won this one. Bob won this. One. You know? like, no. It's just like, I don't yeah. know if everything that we see is absolutely tied to this story, you know, not everything. I would think you're right. Yeah. I, I would think not everything. Some of it might be doodling or something. Something. It might be something that was particular to that particular person, but not the absolutely. order. Yeah, could absolutely. Be. Yep, could be. Yeah. And if, if it was a lot lower, I'd say, yeah, it's a lot more probable. But would you climb 40 feet in the air to do doodle art? Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Here's, but yeah, you make what... a great point, though, Jamie. I mean, it could be whatever yeah. somebody, you know, they're up there working and whatever somebody felt like they were going to draw, they they drew. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, Right there, there's a guy named Mr. Kuba. I, I don't know who he is. He might be related or something. <laughs> he could yeah. be my husband. But he is a soldier or was a soldier. He's mm -hmm. retired now. And he's right. You know, late night watches can get real boring. Yep. <laughs> if most of your guys are sleeping and you're up keeping an eye on them, you might doodle on the wall to stay awake. You know? <laughs> yeah, keep, your, keep yourself busy. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, you know, or or if you want, uh, well, I mean, if, if you look, if you look at what the what the the artwork they find in the in the Templar prisons, all that was done just to keep themselves busy, right? Absolutely. Or you can play a game of hangman. You know. Yeah. That's what. <laughs> that's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> you know, you can you know the, on the ceiling up above and play a little like the hangman. The first one you know? that you showed with the the dinosaur or whatever, um, mm -hmm. it reminded me of like the. Um, I think it was like the 13th or 14th century tapestries, like these really intricate tapestries they used to do. But then the the drawings were kind of crude of like animals and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. never quite got it right, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, so um, uh, we are going to, uh, we're going to have Corian on. We've talked to Corian. Because he's been in here, he's seen these, he knows a lot about this stuff. 
uh yeah po yeah he Corian posted all this on his timeline today talking about how it, it used it was at you know ceiling level you know was they could reach it um later on they kept coring and coring and coring and got much lower um so makes then sense it, then it again i wasn't there so i don't know what they did 20 feet in the air later on so um that's kind of what they were talking about i think uh, the thing that really struck me about this is like what it must have felt like for them you know right. they're or they were hiding out for their point. lives. They're hiding. Yep. They're yep. in cramped spaces. I'm sure they have to be quiet. They can't, you know, they're probably rationing food and stuff. That must have been quite the experience. And they so. certainly don't have lights like what we're seeing right now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, lighting the whole place up. Uh, again, I wanted to show these little round symbols that I was talking about earlier. Here's one here. This is the really the one. This one and this one here are the two that I, and here's another one right here. Uh, where have we seen these before? Now, I did remember where we saw these before. Um, and I'll zoom in a little bit on them so you can get a better look. But check out these right here. That one right here and this one here. Uh, and I was like, wow, I've seen those someplace before. Where have I seen them before? Royston Cave. Mm -hmm. Royston Cave, where Gretchen Cornwall took the guys down in Royston Cave. Um and showed them and there was several examples of it in royston cave there's another well these are like a, a just a regular doesn't have the spoking in it like that one did um uh let's see i think i, I tried to grab here oh, here's another one of them here on the cave wall there was a couple examples apparently i grabbed the wrong pictures that i was looking for but um there was a couple examples of these <coughs> in royston cave um, and here's one of them right here, but there was a couple of them there. So you got that wheel with the spokes, which I think was, had something, uh, I, I forget what Gretchen, I'll have to get Gretchen on here to talk about this. And remember yeah, really the, the ones, <clears throat> the ones on the, on the, in the cavern in the Netherlands, they reminded me a lot of the button that was found. Yes. I was hoping one of you would say that because I think the comments are about to explode if somebody is saying it. <laughs> it does look like, like another button. There's the button. There is Craig. Yeah, I was thinking button too, uh, yeah, too tiny. But you're right. So there you go. I mean, look at, the, I mean, here they are, all those, you know, and very similar, is it not? You know, I mean, looks like a, mm -hmm. a wheel. The button. Yeah. Also, also a couple perfect. of symbols, a couple of symbols up on that roof that looked like the uh, goose paw. In yep. the uh, in the in the Bedford Star, the McMaw Star. Yep. Yeah, there was a, there was a lot of them that just and and again I go back to that whole thing that you know they've taken the these are symbols that are important to them and that's why, um, <clears throat> you know they see them brought over, uh, somewhere else and again we've seen the HO stone we've seen that cross with the four dots on it in different places, um. Yeah, so again, interesting, uh, interesting things that they they've carried over. So, does that tie the Templars in there? I think it kind of does. I really do. I think it kind of does. Um, too too similar on these things. And here's some more of those symbols you guys were talking about yeah, earlier. Right, right, right to the right of those of those Florida of leaves. That's what they are. You'll yep. see the Bedford Stone diagram, the eight pointed right star. Sure. Yep. And then directly beneath it looks like a goose paw. Yep, and the goose paw right there. Two of them. That looks just like that one that was on the Liverpool stones. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oop. There we go. And there's that. Here's another one of those wheels with the spokes. And there's that dot. They talked about this one on the show. The circle with the dot in the center. Yep. Right there. So, you know, you know. Yeah. So a lot, a lot of different symbols that can be associated with Oak Island. Yep. Which is what Corian said. Yep. There's that goose paw again right there. Mm -hmm. And the yep. eight-point star. Yep. Yep. I don't know these dots. And this is this is one here that I thought was really cool. You got that circle. Again, the circle with the, with the spokes, but all these dots in here. Mm -hmm. And here you see one right here that was actually carved into it. Down here below. I don't know what that means. I bet they spent hours and hours uh, there and talked about these. Yeah, all right, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, that's a, and that's the part that that's why we want to have Corian on. Corian's going to come and join us. He's already committed. 
He said he would. He's going to come and join us on the show uh, and give us more of the story that we did not get. Um, we know they're going to go, and, and now in the next episode, they're going to uh, another place, um, Falkenberg, Falkenberg Catacombs. I think he said Falkenberg. I listened to it several times trying to catch exactly what Corian said. It sounded like Falkenberg. Um, okay. I'm probably off a little bit on that, but it's kind of what it sounded like. Again, yeah, interesting things there, certainly. Falkenberg. Valkenberg. There you go. I knew I was off. It's Valkenberg. All right. <laughs> Valkenberg Castle and the catacombs below. <clears throat> um, one thing, Rick, and I, and again, this is one of those quotes that was made. Rick made this quote. If you see the same symbols here in the old world that you see in the new world, specifically on Oak Island and close proximity to Oak Island, is it possible it's just random? I personally think not. No. And again, like he says, in the vicinity of, which would lead you to over the Overton Stone, Liverpool, those places. Exactly. Exactly right. Right. New Ross. I do think, though, that certain ideas are universal throughout. Like Absolutely. We have, we have the pyramids in Egypt. We have mm -hmm. pyramids in Mexico. Does that mean that yep. people from Egypt went to Mexico and taught them how to build pyramids? No, it was just sort of a universal idea. Like, hey, I want to get taller, but I don't want it to fall over. So we're going to build it this way. You know, exactly. um, yep. and I think that that can be the same with certain symbols, too. Um, you know, like mm -hmm. the, the, the circle represents the sun for a lot of cultures throughout history. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that those cultures necessarily knew each other or nope. talked to each other, but not at all. I don't know. And I really, I really think that not enough credit is given to the Mi'kmaq no, um, no. in this whole scenario. Everybody's like, oh, oh they, they must have gone and shown the Mi'kmaq this. But no, not at all. No, and you, yeah, that's, 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 that's what they portray like, exactly. But I, I agree yeah. 100%. I agree 100% with what you're saying. Like, like I say. Yeah. Who showed who what? Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because when they came to North America, somebody would have had to show them how to survive. Champlain learned that the hard way when he got here in 1604. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> right. His first settlement was a complete fail. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, you talk about Egypt and Mexico, but ancient alien astronaut theorist would say different. <laughs> They're connected. But that's a different Listen, show. I love Giorgio's hair, okay? Mm -hmm. But I am not down with his theories. <laughs> no. Yeah. Some, well, some of them know. are out there. <laughs> yeah, they, some of them are quite <laughs> out there. But, in, you know, ancient, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Ancient alien theorists would say yes. Uh, yeah. All right. So there you go. But another quote from Rick real here. quick. They weren't just running for their freedom. They were running to protect something. What they were running to protect, perhaps, was with them, for example, the treasure. That's another quote from Rick. Mm -hmm. Comes up with some great stuff. I'm telling you what, and he's he's absolutely right. It's he had a much better way of saying what I was saying about the symbols. You know, if you see them in the old world and you see them in the new world, specifically on Oak Island or close proximity, is it possible it's just random? He thinks not, and mm -hmm. I also think not. That's that's what I say. Like if you find one circle with a dot. I mean, that could be any place, right? I mean, I do on a piece of paper. I'll draw, I'll make a circle, put a dot in the middle of it. Right. It doesn't mean I'm a Templar. But if you have a, a series, like Rick says, a series of, of symbols mm -hmm. that start being in the same general area, yep. the chances of it being random become few, become yep. lesser, in my opinion. Exactly. exactly right. Yep. Hey, Gretchen, I was just talking about you a little bit ago, looking at your uh, the symbols, some of the symbols that were in that uh that uh, the tunnels there in the Netherlands were the same as the tunnels you had in Royston. Uh, did I want to ask her about it? Yes. <laughs> now that you're here, uh, let me get to that picture. That is and, true. Circles yeah. are hard to carve. Yeah. I mean, they're hard yeah, to draw. <laughs> I can't even draw one. So yeah. right here, uh, Gretchen, if you're watching, hi, uh, this symbol right here, there you got that one right there. And here's one right next to it. And I equated these to that one. And what do you think? You know, so 
Uh, and Royston had a few of them like this in here, um, not just the one. Uh, what what would what did you call this one in Royston Cave? I think it had something to do with Catherine's wheel or Catherine uh, something like that. Let us know what you think. But um, yeah, so that's what I was putting that together. You know these these right here in Royston or in uh, the Netherland tunnels. So Catherine's wheel allegory of a compass. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. Really, really interesting things that, uh, uh, and again, you find them all over the place. Like Tom said, she's a navigational metaphor and is often seen as with a quill. Mm. Now three celebrities for the price of one coach says, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Secrets of navigation. So the coincidence factor becomes even less because now we have three, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. So, okay, next time on the Curse of Oak Island, here we are. And this is the picture I used for the thumbnail tonight. They're digging over it. Look, they dug the bank out. Look at how much they dug out the bank to get in here and drill that, drill those uh, uh, boreholes that we hope to see a camera down in there. We, he, well, I want to see something good come of it. I really, really do. Uh, and then here's that uh, castle that they're going to, um, fortification that they're going to. Um, and, you know, here is, I saw these symbols here um, that they didn't talk about. They probably will next week. We'll probably hear more about it. But look at this one right here. That almost looks like a Templar uh, uh, cross in a circle right there. I, I, I can't, you know, I can't tell for sure. Um, you know, I tried to zoom in on it, and it doesn't get a lot clearer. But it does kind of look like a... Uh, the cross inside of a circle right there. But that wasn't what they were looking for. All I can see is the circle. Huh? All I can see is the circle. Yeah, there's a little bit of shadowing in here. You can see like a line right here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can see like a line across right here. There's a little bit of shadowing there. Again, don't know for sure uh, what that is until we see it next week. And this, they said it had something to do with... Um, um, <laughs> Maybe Mando was there as well. <laughs> Thank you, Saint. <laughs> Thank you for, for patting me in my Mando beliefs. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get to see about these again. But again, there are more symbols that we're going to get to see. And then they picked up this big stone. Yep. Anybody call a tow truck? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the thing. We, we were wondering. Remember, we and, and all of us, we kept talking about this, uh, uh, the tow truck. Why was this big tow truck? Going across the causeway, Karen Public Cover took a picture of it. We were wondering why did this thing go across the causeway? What did and, they and need? Look how heavy that is. Look, look underneath the back wheels of the tow truck. They had to build a log platform or a, a decking platform. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So they picked up one of those rocks because they wanted to see what was underneath it. And I, what in the heck is that? I have no clue. I don't have a clue what that is. Uh, yeah, I want to rock. <laughs> ah, twisted sister, anyone? Yeah, I don't know what this is, but uh, this is what they're trying to uh, trying to see uh, with the scan um, to find out exactly what it is. But I don't know. So we'll find out next week uh, exactly what that is uh, and what's going on. Good. Uh, <laughs> what, what did he say? The I want to rock. I, I want to rock. A hair. Somebody <laughs> said it's a hair. Is it a hair? It could be, I guess. I don't know. They could run oh, DNA yeah. on it if it was a hair. Well, but, I don't know. It's up on Emma's lab wall. Mm. And we don't do DNA there. Nope. We'd have to send that away. So, so it's got to be oh. something metal or something or earthen. I'm thinking if it's up on Emma's wall, it's probably something she scanned, but I don't right. know. Right. Yeah. I'm, oh, thinking they said it was. Like, I'm thinking it's like an x ray they took of something and that's revealed whatever's inside of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I heard hair. I, I, you know, I, I listened to it again and I didn't catch that, but maybe I, I don't know. I didn't hear to to it again. But. There was a hair, but some people did. Some people said that in the, uh, in discord last night, they were saying that they they found a hair 
and they can run DNA. Hair or hairline fracture in some Hairline way. fracture, maybe. And uh, I think I think to run DNA on a hair, don't you need the root? Oh, I yeah, yeah, I think you do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jamie knows, and she ain't talking. Oh, <laughs> no, this one I literally don't know about. Honest to God, like right hand, well, right hand to God, like yeah, mm. don't know. Yep. Well, it's going to be another interesting episode. We only have three to go. I think they finally said there's 25, um, but there is going to be another drilling down. And the drilling down last night was actually pretty good. I got a few things out of that. We may at some point talk about the drilling downs as well, because there was some good information I thought uh, pulled from that. Um, and like uh, uh, Tom had mentioned earlier at the beginning of the show, something that Marty said in the preview for next week was that he said, this was right from Marty. He said, we are definitely drilling in the right spot. There's big whopping bunch of metal, and I want to hit it. Hmm. <laughs> A big whopping bunch of metal, and I want to hit it. So, and that was in the money pit. So, I don't know. What was it? What I mean, when he talks about the, uh, all that metal, is he talking about the truckload of... Uh, the Gerhardt truckload of uh... I, I expect because the hope hopefully the all of the work that Dr. Michael and Dr. Spooner have done is coming back, still showing metal down there. Right. So as far as he's concerned, there's a truckload of something down there and he wants it. And he wants yeah, it. Yeah, I could I mean, given its proximity to Gold River, I could mm. understand if we were seeing some gold in the water. Like, mm. okay, maybe that's natural. But silver is not natural in that part mm. of the world. And so for Dr. Spooner to say, no, there's both here for sure. It had to be a lot of it, right? <laughs> it's like there's yeah. a lot of water that's going through that area. Yep. yep. And that's exactly what keeps me hanging on because there's so many people, even myself, that has believed that the the treasure was there, like the menorah yep. that Corian and Christopher talk about. The menorah had made its way through Oak Island, but it's no longer there. And that's the kind of way I believed. I believe I always believed that the treasure was there. The depositors came back and uh, withdrew their deposit. And but they would find evidence of where it was, the Rick and Marty and the team, yeah. that it was there. But when you go back to what Fred Michaels and Dr. Ian Spooner said about the content, and Ian said this on my show, that the content that the, the, that the content, uh, as much as they're finding, says to him that it has to still be there. I hang yeah. on that. He no. would know, not me. I don't know. No, I, um, I, I, I believe in the science. Um, you know, there's some reason for there to be silver and gold in that water. And it's not um, naturally occurring. Yeah. Bob Elvis, you know, I, it does not, but it does. They, they have found a way to find traces of gold. In the water, it doesn't dissolve. It doesn't, it doesn't dissolve it doesn't do like the, silver. But the, yeah, but the the actual gold is moving in the water. Yeah. So, well, very very out. very minute quantities. But again, when you go back and look at the when they do the parts per million count, mm -hmm. it's definitely there. Yep. Yep. It is. So. And keep in All mind, right, gold, folks. Gold, gold and silver are relatively soft items. Right? They're not like yeah. iron. If you rub them or drop them or whatever on something, you're going to leave traces behind. Yeah. How did it get in the wood and all that too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In the wood samples. So there you go. So hang in there, folks. Hang on, Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to find out more. We got three episodes to go, and I am holding out hope for the money pit yet, even though the garden shaft is kind of a womp womp. We're kind of lost on that one, seems like, but uh, we'll see what happens in the future. The Jane best part, Kuba. though, about losing the money pit, like the garden shaft, is that we got to have choice come back. So, <laughs> at least we got to see them again. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, because they were gone. Those guys are great, too. Yeah, oh, I bet they are. Yeah, and you get to hang out with them at lunch in the tent and all that kind of stuff. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, how fun would that be? I'd just be like the kid in the corner, man, just sitting there listening to it all. <laughs> I really would. I'd be afraid to say anything. You know what? Like my first couple of days, I was a little like, you know, sort of starstruck by everybody and not really sure if if I should approach them or talk to them. But then, I mean, you just see everybody every day. <laughs> it's 
Yeah. They're just your co-workers after a while, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and you were part of the team, so yeah, for sure. But I know how I, I would. I, I would be kind of, you know, kind of kind of the kid in the corner. Didn't want to say anything, but uh, anyway. Thank you so much, Jamie, for joining us again tonight. Tom Thanks Burns, great again. Linda, thank you for all your hard work. And Jan, awesome synopsis once yep. again. Keeping us all yes, in line. Appreciate it so much. Folks, thank you so much for joining us. We ran a little long tonight, but we had a lot to cover. And Carmen <laughs> being here with, with uh, Jamie and Glenn Gretchen. I mean, gee whiz, we had to go long, right? So A couple of hours <laughs> well spent. That's right. That's right. So thank you very much for being here with us tonight. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And give us a thumbs up if you like the content of our show tonight. And we'll catch you next time right here on the J Free 906 podcast. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.